unleashing his potential with a single blow beneath scatter and sparks of black. Yuji Itadori awakens. Even the rays of hope shine black. Holy fuck, what a cold ass intro! Oh my god! Yuji Itadori's here, baby, let's go. Sometimes you gotta close the door to open a window. Jujutsu Kaisen 256 is officially fucking here, and good lord, the wait is over, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Yuji Dori has officially awoken. Gege Akatama has taken his sweet, sweet, delectable time with it, but after 256 chapters, I think we are finally about to see Yuji vs. Kuna in all of its glory. And this chapter has given us a lot, a lot of details to get into text, insight, subtext, and everything uh, like an insight into what the future holds for Yuji and the gang. So without further ado, let's just get into it. And also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. It helps with the massive PP energy for yourself and for me as well. But anyway, this chapter opens up with Gojo talking about the Black Flash with the students, wondering why, the, why he can't pop a Black Flash just whatever he wants. And one thing I will say about this, this little frame in here, I really like the way the panel or the way this explanation is framed. It is framed with just Gojo as if it's some sort of interview segment. And Gege did the exact same thing with Nanami again when Yuji was about to hit his first Black Flash on Hanami. And I kind of like the idea that it kind of parallels that Yuji's about to hit a big, big Black Flash on Sukuna and it parallels the first time that he'd done it. It's sort of, it's, it's, it's interesting. But anyway, Gojo goes on to give us the rundown on the Black Flash, explaining how the Black Flash is it this portion of space that occurs when the cursed energy and physical strike land within 0 0.000001 seconds of each other? But Gojo thinks this definition is a bit lackluster because of course he does he's extra as fuck of course he does anyway because if that's the secret then gojo could pretty much just land one at will and more than likely sukuna also because remember gojo is able to control cursed energy at the atomic level meaning he's incredibly efficient whenever he's using any sort of cursed energy expenditure his six eyes and his limitless basically just all bring it down to almost zero and pretty much anything gojo can do within the realm of cursed energy control sukuna can also do but gojo goes on to explain how he thinks that the main factors for the black flash are to do with temperature and humidity and he also explains that when you charge up your fist with cursed energy three things can happen one the type that strengthens the fist two the type that will crash into his opponent three the type that will do both and gojo mentions that no one except for him can do the third which we already knew from his first fight here with sukuna because it's explained that gojo imbues his punches with his cursed energy technique and also reinforcement, resulting in a punch that would make monsters like Yuta and Hikari throw up, and that also just is incredible for Sukuna, because he was just taking those fucks on the chin. He also mentions how there is really not a correct way to land the Black Flash here. It's something we've seen prominently throughout the entire series. Both multiple people on the heroes and the villain side have hit them, but it is mentioned here how Nanami has the highest consecutive Black Flash record, but Gojo held the record for the most Black Flashes hit overall. However, there is a very interesting statement here about how Yuji will later surpass Gojo in this aspect as well. So I did some digging. I was a bit confused about this and I wanted to clarify for not only myself, but also for the video. During Yuji's fight with Hanami, Yuji lands a grand total of five Black Flashes, the first being on its own and then the final four being one after another. During his fight with Mahito, Yuji landed further three more Black Flashes, all singular, not consecutive. So, including Yuji's current Black Flash on Sukuna, this means Yuji has landed a grand total of nine Black Flashes throughout the entire series overall, which is kind of wild to say. I, for some reason, I just thought it was higher. I, I, for some reason, when he fought Mahito, I thought it was way higher. Anyway, this beats Gojo's record, which is unknown at the moment, but we did see him hit four total during his fight with Sukuna. So, let's just say, because it's Gojo, let's just call at eight and Yuji's beating him by one making it this and that would kind of make the author statements a little bit more sensical here but there's a little hint here it does give us a glimpse into the future of what's to come here with yuji because something interesting i've noticed is that all of the students that gojo has believed would one day surpass him have all done so in their own way in a unique way as well you see hikari's rct is leagues above gojo's and sukuna's as stated by Uumi. yuta's domain was able to target just one individual which is something that gojo couldn't even do here that just leaves us with yuji who 
Kojo thinks will also one day surpass him. So let me provide a theory here. I think by the end of the series here, Yuji's punches will do way more damage than Gojo's because Gojo's punches have been stated to be reinforced with cursed energy alongside his cursed technique, making them absolutely devastating. And as Gojo said himself, he's the only one that can do this. However, right now, Yuji's punches are not only just strong due to him being freaky strong, there is the backup of the soul damage that they do and they can inflict. And then to add a little bit more spice into the crackpot theory here, Yuji's Divergent Fist also adds even more damage by adding a time delay to the Gaze Energy reinforcements being hit after the physical strike. Now, imagine if Yuji was able to control the Black Flash, which is something that has been hinted at and theorized now for a long fucking time. And I think that the first opener panels here is a more of a dig and a more of a hint into that and at this point if yuji could do that we'd be looking at a punch from yuji that would hit the soul with a physical attack physical strike from his fist and then the aftershock of a black flash and divergent fist right after it that kind of punch would put you fucking asleep and speaking of sleep today's video is sponsored by manta mask to a sleeping mask company that provides you with one of the greatest nights sleep available you'd be snoozing like sakuna after one of those black flashes they offer a range of masks for all different types of sleep and if you use code WEEB on their website or checkout or even click the link in the description here, you'll get yourself off 10% off your purchase. So massive, massive thank you to Manta Sleep for sponsoring today's video. Anyway, Yuji and Shoso go forward to attack Sukuna here, and it is nice to see that these two are having more bond the time. I like that the synergy here between them. I've always said Shoso is one of the more underrated characters in the series. I think he's got easily top five character development within the series for me personally. As it stands right now, Yuji tries also pinning Sukuna to a wall with a rail that Shoso had kicked up and Yuji had caught, but Sukuna's just simply not having any of that business, and he slides out from underneath that motherfucker and is attacked by Maki as he is getting away. But I want to point out here that Sukuna actually catches this soul with a sword, and I wonder if he's using that same technique that he did with Yuta to grab a hold of it, which would be kind of interesting. But we see him and Maki using the air as stepping stones to fight each other, which Choso being fully confused by it is he's rightfully so. He's It's nice to see this finally be confirmed by someone else in the series, but this does raise a couple of questions in the crackpot theory department of whether Sukuna has has some sort of form of heavenly restriction. This air stepping ability, it was something that was uniquely pointed out for Maki when she finally awoke her full potential against Naoya. And it's food for thought there, especially when Sukuna has been so handy with Bind of Vows. And we know heavenly restriction is a Bind of Vow. I mean, we saw him do it in Shibuya, but it was never ever explicitly pointed out. We see him like jumping behind Jogo here and just volume jogo down to the floor anyway sakuna being absolutely ecstatic that maki is here again looks absolutely black flash against maki which by the way she absolutely eats that shit by the way like no worries at all um i'm not sure here let me know in the comments below what you guys think but i can't tell if she actually eats that shit to the chest or she actually blocks it with the soul soul liberation blade i can't really tell however sakuna fires off slashes here at maki which maki notices the output of his base slashes is increasing and i'll get back around to that in a little minute here but sakuna fires off a slash at shoso here and i love the fact that sakuna is using his sliced off nubbin hand here as if he's still got a hand to hold the arm that's firing the slash i think that's kind of funny but Choso tries to hit him with the supernova here as we see in the background we can see all the little black dots or well, red dots appearing in the background and sakuna just simply way too fucking fast for him firing slashes at Choso and then appearing behind Choso before the slashes even land he used the slashes as a decoy to keep Choso's attention focused here so sakuna could go around which is kind of insane like that the fight iq from sakuna is actually insane and we're starting to get it to see way more more of it now but Sakuna lands behind him and throws Choso into a wall and then boom the fourth black flash from Sakuna comes thundering down upon Choso's chest however Choso reacts fast enough to soften the blow of the punch with a hardened blood armor something that catches Sakuna off guard here you can see Sakuna's eyes like quite shocked by it Choso here he looks 
He looks demonic. He actually reminded me a lot of Megami when Megami first used the domain against the finger bearer here. Anyway, Yuji is back. Yuji's back on the scene, and he lands a clean, and I mean a very, very clean punch on Sukuna here. Knocking him back a fair bit here, but once again, this is disrupting Sukuna's cursed energy output off his body and his control. It's something that Maki just noticed that his output was getting up here. I would really like to see a moment here where Yuji and Sukuna just trade punches, maybe even just trading punches with black flashes where Sukuna's output's going up. He gets hit by Yuji, it goes back down again, and we're just in this sort of like chess match of who cracks first. I would like to see that. I was talking about this on stream the other day. By the way, if you don't know, I stream quite often. You should come by and check them out. Also, I have a Discord server, so if you want to join that, it'll be in the description below. Uh, I was talking about this on stream the other day. It reminded me of an old school fight from the Pride days of Don Fryer and his Japanese opponent, whose name I've now forgotten. Anyway, yeah, those two just stand in the ring, just beating the fuck out of each other. And I think that would be kind of funny if we saw something similar, but with Yuji and Sukuna. Anyway, Choso passes something to Yuji here, and you might be wondering what is that, but we'll get into that in a moment. Yuji and Sukuna have a small little 1v1 here with Yuji trying to to knee Sukuna here, and Sukuna uses both of his nubbins this time to block the knee, which makes me wildly uncomfortable, the fact that he's just blocking a, a, stri a strike with just raw bone. Yeah, it makes me really uncomfortable. Uh, but anyway, Yuji is grabbed the same way it happened in uh, uh, Yuta's domain here, but Yuji is grabbed, and they end up in this grappling position here, with Yuji emulating exactly bar for bar what Gojo did, wrapping his re legs around Sukuna, and leaning back and firing a point-blank Pearson blood at Sukuna's face. Now remember, Choso passed something to Yuji, right? That right there is what he passed him. He passed him condensed blood. You see, Yuji can't compress the blood that he needs to to fire off a piercing blood. He's not able to use convergence, and convergence is what he needs to use that piercing blood. And as Choso states, that's why he's here. He's here to keep looking after Choso. Again, Choso's just, just underrated. The big brother. I love him. I think he's a really fucking great character, but this piercing blood grazes Sukuna's face here, slicing a big chunk of his face off here. And Sukuna has an expression on his face that looks of somewhat interest. He looks kind of like, oh, okay, we're finally getting somewhere with you. Or, you know, at least that's how it looks to me anyway. You guys can let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, the narrator kicks in. After we're given this absolutely beautiful panel of Yuji looking fucking menacing. And we see Sukuna... He looks locked in, and as the narrator mentions, at that moment, just as Mahito had sensed from Yuji in Shibuya, Sukuna felt the same premonition of an oncoming black flash. Now, this statement for me is super, super interesting because 10 months ago, I made this video talking about how Mahito could have reached Sukuna's level if he'd survived Shibuya. But Mahito and Sukuna are the only people in a fight who have had that premonition of someone who was about to hit a Black Flash. And a Black Flash, as we know, it has no real trigger or cause. It's just, they just come at random, which is insane. So that's kind of some Mahito gas. I'm always down for some of that. But also on top of this, Yuji, again, in this situation, seems to be able to just call upon a Black Flash as if he's able to do it at will. But Sukuna here might have just recognized that that's what Yuji was about to hit simply from being present inside of Yuji's body during the fight with Mahito and during the fight with Hanami and all of that. So he might have just recognized that this is just how Yuji fights and he's just a Black Flash machine, I suppose. However, this is where Sukuna takes a small L into a relatively large L. Yeah, remember LaRue? Yeah, that dude's actually still alive, and his ability wasn't just grabbing people with his heart hand thing. He's actually able to grab their attention and their consciousness to make them look and focus at him. Their, their eyes turn to little hearts here. And this is honestly a surprise to me, because honestly, I wasn't really expecting LaRue to just be alive after Sukuna's Black Flash. But here we are, shout out LaRue, small MVP of the fight here. But anyway, Sukuna is left wide open for quite possibly the greatest black flash of all time unleashing his potential with a single blow beneath scattering sparks of black itadori yuji awakens even the rays of hope shine black yuji lands quite possibly the biggest and definitely the best black flash we've seen all series and it's not even up for debate for me personally this is the best black flash we've seen all series and he awakens officially as per the narrator he awakens officially and there is a very, very important detail here that I need to talk about, and that's Yuji's eyes. You see, Yuji's eyes here, they're completely different. This isn't just an intense look. No, these are Sukuna's eyes that we see. That's Sukuna's but peepers right there, and we've seen them before because you see right here, Yuji's eyes here, this is where he's in the middle of battle. He's focused, he's locked the fuck in, his eyes are dilated, he's ready, and this... 
is Yuji's eyes upon us awakening. Now, we've seen this here before, so let me cast your mind back to the second greatest Yuji chapter of all time, chapter 214, where Yuji, at this point, we see Yuji's eyes change from pure rage and anger to the exact same eyes as Sukuna as he launches himself from a building. And in fact, it's in this moment that Yuji's strength completely blindsided Sukuna. It surprised him. It caught him off guard and it made him question where the fuck did this strength even come from? And then he casts his mind back and he says, all right, then. But now Yuji has awakened. The possibilities for this are just completely endless because for his growth, we could see Yuji use Sukuna's black box technique, which I theorize now that he, he has already. And that's why Sukuna hasn't used it since he left Yuji's body. He could have cleave and dismantle as per gojo's predictions from way back when here we could also see yuji learn to control the black flash at will this again bear in mind a sorcerer's understanding of chaos energy after hitting a black flash is leagues above those who have never hit one and yuji has hit the most amount of black flashes within this fucking series which is insane but he was also able to learn how to control the time delay on his chaos energy something that should be difficult for someone who knows how to do it and he learned rct within just one month i mean this is something that took gojo to, it took gojo to literally die before he was able to do that we could see Yuji fully learn to control blood manipulation. We could see him learn gravity, or he could just outright use every single technique I've just listed. And either way, whatever Gege is cooking here for Yuji, I think the food is ready and it is smelling phenomenal. And I am incredibly excited. So expect a full video for that because this chapter was just, it was, it was something in and of itself. This, this might be one of my favorite chapters of all time. And I know I say that a lot, but I've been feeling a little bit frustrated as I've talked about in videos and in streams. I've been feeling a little bit frustrated with the chapters, but this one, this really brought me back. All of the patience and all of the waiting, it, it, it's just... <sighs> payoff was worth it, man. Anyway, if you're looking for some more Yuji gas, I'll recommend you some videos here. Uh, I've done quite a few Yuji videos on the channel. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, I will catch you guys all in the next one. Much fucking love. Big fucking kisses.